on air, online, on demand. Watch AFR when you want, where you want with CN8, the Comcast Network. season is obviously upon us and while millions of Americans board airplanes bound for vacation destinations, the air traffic control system that gets you where you're trying to go is in a crisis. You know that. We've been reporting on it. Too few controllers have the FAA racing to try and find ways to train new ones. So much so that now, now they're recruiting teenagers. But is that such a bad idea? Here's correspondent Deborah Ferry with more on this ATC alert. Ever thought of a career landing planes? With the majority of the nation's air traffic controllers reaching mandatory retirement, the FAA is racing to find recruits. Advertising on websites like YouTube, MySpace, even Craigslist. We are targeting a new generation and we're trying to connect with them where they are. NBC host Jay Leno laughed about it. We don't trust him to drive a car, but land a 747. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but veteran air traffic controllers like union rep Dean Iacopelli say it's no joke. Would you want a kid fresh out of high school with no experience whatsoever put into those situations where split second life and death decisions need to be made? I wouldn't. The FAA plans to hire and rigorously train some 3,000 new controllers this year alone, the majority 24 and younger. 18-year-olds today can go off to war and serve this country. So we will train the folks uh, we hire and we will make sure they're fully certified to serve in our facilities. The union says the real problem is hands-on experience, that by 2011, a whopping 60% of all air traffic controllers will have been on the job less than five years. We have 40 people in here now who have absolutely no air traffic experience whatsoever, and somehow they need to get up to speed to the point where they can handle traffic you know, in the nation's busiest, most complex airspace. But Ian Lazarus, a senior at Vaughan College of Aeronautics and Technology across from New York's LaGuardia Airport, says he's ready. It's, you know, education and experience. They both come together at one point. No question. No questions at all. Let's talk more about this now and this uh, crisis with the air traffic control towers. And uh, Doug Church is joining me now. Uh, he is a spokesperson for the National Air Traffic Controllers Association. Uh, thank you for joining me, uh, Mr. Church. Uh, you know, I guess, you. On, I guess on the surface, when we look at society today, I mean, teenagers uh, are very, very adept at playing video games. And these video games are pretty sophisticated. I guess in one way, can that be translated to an air traffic control screen? Well, it can, except that the problem now is you have a, you've gone the, the full spectrum. We had a shortage of air traffic controllers that had built up over the early part of this decade, and you combine that with what the FAA did to the controller workforce in 2006, which was impose their version of a contract, harsh work rules, uh, less rest um, uh, for controllers during the course of their work week, uh, pay cuts for controllers, experienced controllers. And what that did was speed up the rate of attrition of the experienced controllers who left creating this vacuum, and so the FAA had to scramble because the, uh, the attrition rate was higher than they expected. They had to scramble to find new ways of, of finding the next generation of air traffic controllers. Well, well, scrambling, and in that scrambling, you're going to places like Craigslist and YouTube and MySpace. Now, those are pretty unconventional areas, I would think, uh, to try and find someone for such a high-caliber job. What's been the response to that? Well, that's exactly right, and the, you know, the experience level in air traffic control is the key thing. You have to have that balance between between those who are the most experienced and having a healthy number of, of new trainees who can learn from those on the job. The, the Department of Transportation Inspector General cited last month the fact that no more than one out of every four controllers in a facility should be trainees because it's the on-the-job trainers are the ones who are the experienced controllers and we're losing them at such a high rate. In fact, we have a 16-year low now in the number of experienced fully trained controllers and that spells trouble for those being hired off the street because in places like Miami or Southern California they're having to wait uh, months and, and oftentimes over a year just to get any training whatsoever. Right, but, 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 but everyone's got to be trained. Anyone who takes that job has got to be trained and starting at day one from some point. So, so what would be the difference if, if it's an 18-year-old or a 36-year-old? Well, 
it, it's like the, you know the Phillies, for example. I mean, you're, 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 you need a healthy balance. You know, you've got to have those who've experienced all those situations in the past, and, and it, with air traffic control, it's a different experience every day. And the training process is such where you, it needs to take two or three years, so you can build up that seasoning, so you can experience the different dynamics that come into play, whether it's thunderstorm activity uh, or emergency situations on board an aircraft. And those are things that absolutely, you know, the, this is a, in every sense of the word, a young person's game um, because you can't even be hired past the age of 31 because the FAA wants you for a 25-year career. Sure. But we have to have that level of experience still present in the system to keep things moving uh, and keep the system moving as uh, safely and efficiently as possible, but at the same time getting those young persons ready to take over for them. But right now they're, they're yeah. leaving at too high of a rate. Yeah, well we know that um, there have been a number of very close calls and near misses and the airways are more crowded than ever before and you talked to some of the challenges that they're facing in the control tower. Uh, you know, uh, an 18 year old can go and fight for, for our country and, and as we said, they're pretty good at playing these uh, sophisticated video games, but in a video game, if you make a mistake, you just start over. That's not the case in a control tower, is it? Well, that's absolutely right. And, and before last year, the FAA really only got their new controllers from one of two places. Number one, you got them from the military. You had a military air traffic control experience. Or you got them from a four-year degree program, of which there were more than a dozen schools around the country, such as Embry-Riddle in Florida, that trained the, the new people for about four years before you even entered the FAA uh, Academy. Mm -hmm. So they, there was an element of having that you know, starting a good push to your career so that you can start, the, uh, you know, sort of in the fast lane as you entered your first air traffic facility. Yeah. Now what we're seeing is this desperation on the FAA's part because so many more experienced controllers have left because of the labor situation and the lack of a new contract that it has demanded that the FAA hire more people and they've run out of candidates from the military and from CTI schools that control uh, the uh, college yeah. programs so they've had to hire off of Craigslist and MySpace sure. and well, you know the problem with that you know like you mentioned earlier and as your uh, as the report on CNN mentioned earlier is that they're being thrown into situations that are quite difficult I mean like I say it's like throwing a pitcher from high school onto the mound at Citizens Bank Park and saying look you got to throw a perfect game today and every day and right. hit a Grand Slam home run well, because failure is not an option in this profession. Well, we'll have to see if it catches on and if it is a trend that is here to stay, uh, we shall see. Doug Church, spokesperson for the National Air Traffic Control Association, thank you so much for joining me uh, on this report. And by the way, we should also point out that the uh, FAA was invited to be a part of this uh, segment and they uh, chose not to participate.